Just gonna do a quick rundown of how this is set up and how it works. What you see is what you get. That's the indoor unit. It does both heating and cooling. Right now I, I need neither. It's perfectly comfy in here. This is my pantry. This will be next year's project. I have room in that corner. Never use it to put a uh, lithium powered solar portable power station. There's my east panels, 5,000 watts. On the other side of the garage is another 2,000 watts facing west. And they are all grid tied. And there's another 2,000 watts on the wall, grid tied. Set it and forget it. And this is my new not grid tied. They connect to my solar heat pump. Yeah, 330 watts each. And they're wired in series. Total open circuit voltage. I was reading about 170 volts. I imagine under load, it's probably closer to 150. I'd have to look at the stickers and do the math. That's my DC shutoff. That's a DC fuse. Pretty high voltage in there. 160. This takes a max of 500 volts. It's rated at. This is the pivot point. This is zeroed center. So I can easily adjust it by myself. So when I do adjust the elevation, the box will be crooked, of course, but I don't need a lot of slack in these wires because it pivots right at the center point. Corrugated automotive stuff, some tie wraps. I should actually move these tie wrap sharp edges up to the top so I don't hit my head on them. And there it goes directly into my heat pump. There's the condensate. There's the DC. I wrapped up those wires that were exposed. They're kind of spread out, so I couldn't get the corrugated to go all the way up. So I just wrapped it up in tape to keep loosely in tape. Loosely, I say, to let the water out. That's your DC assistant. Right now, it's generating enough off the solar that this would run for free. I have tested it at night, twice. I set it for 20 degrees Celsius. And about three o'clock in the morning, it kicked on. And it ran till about 6.30 in the morning. It's that time of year where we're getting down to pretty close to freezing temps. We're getting down to like two degrees, four degrees Celsius at night. And then I ran it again a couple days later at 21C. And it pretty much ran from midnight till about 6.30 in the morning. And it consumed 2.68 kilowatt hours. Yeah, you heard that right. 2.6 kilowatt hours running this off the grid at nighttime. This is just 110 volts in here. A number 10 wire coming in. Oh, I can't, I don't want to take that off for you. There's not much to see in there. There's a number 10, um, 10 3 wire. So if I ever decide to upgrade, I can run a 240 volt heat pump off of it. If this thing ever craps out, I would upgrade it with a uh, two head heat pump. There's not much else to show. Now, when I was showing you the pantry on the inside of the kitchen, that is right about here. And I could run split, parallel split the DC, run a cable into the pantry, and plug it directly into a, um, portable power station and I did find one that can take up to 150 volts DC it said I got to test what my DC is at a load you don't want to burn it out the reason I want to do that is I'll be able to cool into the evenings in the summer or heat into the evenings in the winter and I will run another power cord from the the portable power station to my 10 gallon hot water tank on the inside and I would run AC from the power station, which will be right about there, to the other side of the basement with 120 volt. Um, I would use a 12 gauge 10-2 or 12-2 loop.
Lumax cable on the inside. The reason I want to do that, I don't need heating or cooling, and I'm probably generating about two, two and a half kilowatt hours each per day off of these panels. And it's going nowhere. It's not getting used. With that power station, I could probably on days like today when I don't need heating or cooling, I could probably run my entertainment center off of it and the hot water tank. If I buy about a three kilowatt hour, four kilowatt hour power bank, that'll be next spring. Here's the 10 gallon water hot water heater tank. It's not a hot water tank, it's a water heater tank. <laughs> you don't heat hot water. Anyway, that's in series with my tankless. If I was to hook that up to a lithium powered power station that charges directly from the DC, I could preheat my water before it goes into my tankless. There's a couple of bypass valves. Right now it's in bypass. These go to and from the 10 gallon tank. To get water to go through there first, I close this and open these two. And then it circulates through the 10 gallon tank first. And if that's being heated from solar, and then when you call for water, it would be preheated. That's your in inlet right there. If you preheat the water and it's at target temp, the incoming water is at target temp, this won't even fire. If it's a little bit colder than target temp, no big deal this will fire and maintain that temperature. I could actually probably set that hotter than this is set for upstairs. I got this calling for 50 Celsius. If I set that to say 52 or 54 Celsius, this won't even fire if the water's preheated. So I'd be saving on natural gas and whatever power this consumes as well when it fires. This is on grid. It runs on solar when I'm exporting more than I'm importing. Genius.